Good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on Nationwide at 5. It's a Monday afternoon, Monday, November 11. I'm Cliff. And I'm Ricardo Brooks. Good afternoon, listeners. Good afternoon to you, Cliff. Good afternoon, Ricardo. How are you? I'm all right. Good. I'm all right. Uh, still trying to, I think I'm virtually over it now. The routing <laughs> <laughs> we got from Donald Trump. <laughs> I know, did you say we? <laughs> yes, we. <laughs> Congratulations to President-elect Trump. Yes, yes. And he deserves to govern as he has indicated he will. And for all of those Democrats who are, you know, still really gutted and, you know, by having remorse, allow the president to govern. He won an election and he told us what he will be doing. And elections have consequences. Absolutely. Back anyway, here in Jamaica. Two constituencies and two local parish divisions are gearing up for the November 22 by-elections. The by-elections will be held in South Trelawney and Northwestern St. Andrew, as well as the Morant Bay and Town divisions. In Town, the candidates are the JLP's Suzette Barton and the PMP's Delroy Dawson. Both candidates say they are confident of victory when they face the polls later this month. The in and town by-election was triggered by the untimely passing of the councillor, the JLP's Marjorie McLeod McFarlane, in September. She died after a battle with cancer. Mrs. Mac McLeod McFarlane won the division by a slim margin of only 92 votes in the February 2024 local elections. If Mr. Dawson were to flip the division, it would tie the Clarendon Municipal Corporation, which currently sees the GLP enjoying an advantage of 12 to 10. We invited both candidates, and I understand we only now have Suzette Barton of the Jamaica Labour Party. Mr. Dawson had confirmed uh, his attendance. Uh, our producer is still trying to make contact with him. So we'll press on. Good afternoon, Miss Barton. Good afternoon, Cliff. Good afternoon, Ricardo. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, tell me a little bit about Susan. Suzanne, is it Suzanne or Suzette? Suzette, Suzette Barton. Who are you? It's Suzette. Yes. But before I, I just um, just want to say good evening, Jamaica. Good evening to the Indian Town Division. And uh, let me get straight to who Suzette is. Mm -hmm. So I am Suzette Barton. I am a wife, a mother, a sister, an aunt. If you come to my community, I um, you ask for Auntie Shelley or Sister Shelley. I've been an educator for 34 years mm. and counting a few months, 34 years. I At what level of the education system? At what level of the education system have you been working? Well, I have worked at all levels. I have taught at the kindergarten level. I have ta um, taught at the primary level. And I've spent most of my years at the high school level, mm. the secondary level. Mm -hmm. And you're still in the classroom? Yes, I'm still in the classroom. Okay. Where do you teach? I teach at Homo Technical High. And what subject, do you, what subject do you teach? I teach a subject now, social studies and Caribbean studies at sixth form. Okay. And mm -hmm. what, what made you decide to put yourself forward as a candidate uh, to represent Town? Well, I entered the political arena because I have always, um, I can relate readily to the principles and the policies of the Jamaica Labour Party. So I've always been working as um, in the strategy room. I've worked as a runner. I've worked at all different levels at the party, with the party. And for how many years have you been working with the party? Uh, over 30 years. Oh. oh. Yes. So Over 30 years. Is it true you are related to the late McLeod McFarlane? Yes, Council? I am her cousin. Oh, you are. Oh, so you have worked with her in the division that's yes. in and town? 
Yes, I was a part of her executive team. Oh. Mm-hmm. And she would have won in February uh, this year by just 92 votes. So yeah. you are defending or attempting to defend a slim margin. Uh, first of all, what accounts for such a slim margin? Is it a situation where people in the division are unhappy with the Labour Party? And how will you change that come November 22? All right. Um, it's not. Remember, this division is predominantly a PNP stronghold division. Right? Um, we have only been able to wrestle this division just a few times from the PNP. So... That said, um, Miss Marjorie did very well in getting the division by 92 votes. Mm. Right? Because it's, it's a strong enclave of, the, of the, the, the PNP. Yes. Let me just tell our listeners some background data. In February 2024, Marjorie McLeod gained 1,403 votes. To the PNP is Delroy Dawson, 1,311. That provided for the margin of 92. Voter turnout in February was only 31%. In 2016, the PNP is Delroy Dawson, won. Yeah, so he's, div- he's making a return to the division. He, wa- he won in 2016 with... 1,307 votes. He defeated the JLP's Utenel Delavante, who polled 1,160 votes. That's a margin of 147 votes, with a voter turnout of just under 32%. In fact, 31.85%. So considering that, do you believe that you're swimming against the tide? No, we are not. Why do you say that? Um, because we are heading in the right direction where getting the voter turnout is concerned. Remember, um, we had a national, we ended up with a positive national voter turnout, more than the national voter turnout. Mm-hmm. So the division got a higher na- um, voter turnout than the national voter turnout. So people are willing to go to the polls, it is just that we need to get the voters out to the poll. But you described it as a PMP enclave. So yes. if you bring out more voters, aren't you worried then that you would lose? No, I'm not. Because people are disillusioned. With Underrepresentation. The... Underrepresentation would um, point to the decline in popularity of the the PNP, right? So the PNP would have had this division for so many years. And we're not campaigning. Was this the first time the JLP, was this the first time in 2024, February, the JLP was winning in and town? No. How many times before that the JLP Um, won? Two official times on record. Do you recall what years were those? Uh... It might, um, I don't recall, um, I don't recall, but mm-hmm. it, it, was, it would be before um, Delroy Dawson took over, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Um, so, um, Mr. Dawson has been there for the past 12 and a half years. Mm-hmm. And that, right. that they would have won that during the tenure of Dali Harris? Yes. Mm. Yes. Hold the line for us, and we're talking with uh, the JLP candidate for the Anon Town Division, Suzette Barton. We were scheduled to have Miss Barton and her uh, rival, Delroy Dawson, who agreed with us. We spoke with him up to about 15, 20 minutes before 5.30, and he reconfirmed And our producer is now having difficulty finding Mr. Dawson, remembered. Uh, I hope you remember that you did agree to discuss 
and in and join us in this discussion with Miss Barton. We're trying to find you, Mr. Dawson. Story and we're focused on the Ain and Town division. The JLP's Suzette Barton uh, will be going up against the PMP's Delroy Dawson. Both candidates uh, agreed to be here with us. We have Miss Barton. Uh, we've been unable to reach Delroy Dawson, and we now have word from the Secretariat of the People's National Party that there was a walk in the division. And uh, it started to rain, and apparently Mr. Dawson was separated from the MP caretaker, and so they're having difficulty, they say, now reaching him. And we should tell our listeners why we are focused this afternoon on Anon Town, and later this week it will be Morant Bay, because it is our considered view that the real race is going to be between the parties in these two divisions for Friday, November 22. Right. The two parliamentary by-elections are going to be uncontested by the main opposition, of course, the PNP. And in particular, the Anon Town division could be very competitive given the recent voting behavior in Anon Town. Anon Town is part of Northern Clarendon. It's now represented in the Parliament by the JLP's Dwight Sibley, an attorney at law, and he won it in 2020. Prior to that, it was the PNP's Horace Daly who dominated that constituency, yeah, except for a period when it was uh, what brought Laurie Broderick, yeah, who won it for a time, and then Daly regained it. So we, we, we think this is going to be very competitive. Mm. It is going to be competitive in the sense that the two parties are not in a dominant position. The results have been close. The last councillor who died, Marjorie McLeod McFarlane, she won it by only 92 votes. In 2016, Mr. Dawson, who returns as a PNP's candidate this time around, he won it by only 147 votes. And the JLP has brought in a new, uh, a new candidate. She's not new to the division, a 34-year veteran educator, and has been part of the JLP constituency executive. She says for several years. Right. So, barring some act of God, we think you know the outcome of the parliamentary by-elections will be clear. So, Morant Bay and Ainan Town is where the political battle will be. Uh, Miss Barton, in terms of the national mood and people's perception of the JLP government, how do you think that will impact your chances in Anon Town? Well, um, as I said before, the Anon Town, if you check the, the stats of the previous elections, Anon Town has always had a higher um, voter turnout than the national voter turnout. Right? So the Anon Town people, we vote. Right. So, so, uh, I, so, so the polls, the, the polls will, will not be a deterrent for the people coming out to vote because it is the, the people are disillusioned. At, at, I'm speaking at the national. Uh, Hello, Miss Barton. Miss Barton. Miss Barton. Yeah. Okay. So she she doesn't seem to be here now. But so, so the question is, Cliff. Hmm. Obviously. So anecdotally, polling data suggests, uh, anecdotally and polling data suggests that there is discontent with the government, right? Yes. And you saw a lot of that playing out in the February local elections. Right. So, so the question is now, does Miss Barton feel that that national discontent with central government could mm. trickle down and make her chances here in Inan Town uh, complicated. She seems to be focused on the voter turnout, and she seems to believe that if the turnout is high or higher, she's back. She, she's going to win. Miss Barton? Miss Barton? Yes, yes, I'm here. Again. Yeah, right. So, so, so the question was in terms of the national mood, yeah, there's there's been discontent with the government, the Andrew Holness government. And I'm asking how you think that will impact you, not on voter turnout, but on the issues. People say they're not feeling the economic uh, progress. People complaining about things like roads, uh, the cost of living, yeah. corruption is a challenge. How do you think those issues may impact your local race? Okay, um, 
everything is a challenge. But the local, uh, at the, lo the Anian Town Division, right, we have been making great inroads mm -hmm. in the services that we've been able to provide. Okay. The JLP administration has been, um, we have been utilizing the services that have been offered. Right, our MP has been doing some great work. work. Road rehabilitation, as you mentioned, road, that's a challenge that we have in this division. So we have been doing some roads. We have been offering social services. We have been taking the social services to the people, right, that they do not know, that they did not know exist, mm. right? So we have been tapping into the resources of the government and bringing these resources to the people. So I, I don't see a lot of um, disillusionment um, so far being on the ground with the JLP administration in the Anian Town Division. Really? What, what, what When you go knocking on the doors, mm -hmm. yes, uh -huh. asking the people of Inan Town for their support. What are the issues they're raising with you? Okay, roads, water, but, you know, to be honest, yes. a lot of the people, they acknowledge that four years compared to almost 30 years would be an impossible task to address all of these issues. Hmm. Right? So the people... Even the supporters of the PNP party, they understand that the neglect of the division was as a result of their political personnel not carrying out their responsibility mm -hmm. in an effective manner. Almost 30 years to almost four years, 13 years to six months. And if you would drive through this division and you could see what Miss Marjorie accomplished in six months compared to years that someone else would have served, you would understand the mood that we are in in the mm. Anian Town division. Yes. The Prime Minister was in Anian Town, was it Friday night or Saturday night, Miss Barton? Friday night. Friday night. And uh, there's a, 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 a video that has gone virtually viral now with the Prime Minister attempting to cross a footbridge. I don't, it's a, I don't know what you would... Makeshift bridge. A makeshift foot. Yes. Uh, what, what will, how would you describe it, Miss, Miss Barton? Piece of board. All right. That footbridge, <laughs> it's a single hole that is on beyond the bridge. One single hole. So the persons made their house, and mm -hmm. there is um, a stream that runs between their house and the, the main houses on the other side. So they made a makeshift bridge. Mm -hmm. So we crossed it. Yes. But and listen to this, and I, I want your, your reaction to, to, we found it absolutely hilarious. Here's what the Prime Minister said and as he attempted to cross that footbridge. Miss <laughs> 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 Barton. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get that. Can you can you please interpret what was said? L listen, listen. <laughs> 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 well, the Prime Minister has since committed to helping with a proper crossing passage to that house. Uh -huh. But it was clearly pretty dangerous for the Prime Minister to be saying to the gentleman who apparently is one of his security detail, don't come on the bridge, I'm upon it, you know. Well. That means it's it's a threat or risky or not, not necessarily because uh. those persons have been using that uh. that little bridge for mm. years oh so was, was there well, I, well 
Um, I didn't even know that that was said, but it, it, as I said, mm-hmm. a commitment has been made uh-huh. to um, that 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 bridge will be fixed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that bridge will be fixed. Uh, for the people of the Ain and Town Division, who you clearly have a lot of regard for, and you you, you clearly trust them, you think they're going to come out to the polls to vote. What can they expect from you if they should elect you as their councillor? Well, um, they can expect me to first continue and expand on the work that was started already. They can expect me to engage my youth. We have a lot of young people in the Indian Town Division, youth empowerment. And, you know, as a teacher, this is something that is going to, to be natural for me, wanting to M- empower Ms. Barton, what does that mean? From my, from my, from me, I mean, me, me, I hear about this youth empowerment. Politicians right. say that all the time. Youth, what does that mean? Okay, youth empowerment means that you engage the youth in such a way so that they do become, they do become powerful, they do become in, um empowered they can they become self-reliant right they become um less dependent on others right and how do you do that as a counselor as a counselor i bring the services of the administration to them Mm. the services that are out there for example heart heart truth Mm-hmm. We bring services of the SDC, the JCF. We bring services to the to the to the to the um, youth, so that they know that they can become skilled. They can be. They, they can get a skill training. They can get certification in a part in a particular area of their choice. That's empowering them. And, and is it your understanding that they they don't now know that these services exist? Some of them do know, but there is no one really and truly, um, apart from Miss Mac coming in, because this was a part of our vision, mm-hmm. coming in to drive, right, to drive these services. Because you can know something, but somebody, you need somebody sometimes to be behind you mm-hmm. or to be the driving force yeah. to take you to these resources that exist. Mm-hmm. True. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Barton, Suzette Barton. That's where we're going to leave it. We are, we're up on the break. Thank you so much, and all the best for, for November 22, ma'am. All the best. Okay, and um, before we go, I just want to ask my, tell my constituents of the Indian Town Division, remember to go out next week, Friday, November 22, put your X beside the bell, a vote for Suzette Barton. Thank you for having me. I'll send you all bill. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's a cover story.